I love our kids. I love our kids. They are the future of not only the church, but they are the future of Christianity. Are you hearing me, church? They are the future of Christianity. And so, if you want a hope for the Christian movement in our country or in this world, then you better be focused on the next generation. And I pray that you're praying for our kids and you're praying for our schools. You know, this this week's message um, has been welling up in me. And if I get a little bit excited, uh, I don't want y'all to think it's odd or anything, okay? Uh, Amen. Uh, Amen. (laughs) Hey, you wonder. Um, But you know, sometimes we have to reflect. Sometimes we have to reflect and say, okay, what is it exactly that we Christians at Bethel Baptist Church really believe. I mean, you guys are looking good this morning. I want you to know that. But you need to know why you're here. Amen? See, in a nutshell, here is what we as Christians believe here at Bethel Baptist Church. We believe that God loves His people so much that He sent His only Son, Jesus to live as an example to us then he was then he suffered and died paying the penalty for sin for us and then he was gloriously raised from the dead resurrected from the grave to prove his authority over death to us now he offers everybody all of us who believe eternal life with God in heaven Friends, we need to know that great news. Is that great news or what? I mean, that despite our sinful nature, we still have an opportunity to believe in Christ and be with God for all eternity in heaven. That is great news. But listen carefully. If we truly believe that the news is good, then we are going to want other people to hear it too. Amen? As Christians, you've got to admit, we do what we believe. As Christians, we live what we believe. As Christians, we get excited about what we believe. As Christians, we devote ourselves to what we believe. As Christians, we seek more from the source of what we believe. In essence, our message, what we believe, is our number one priority. And if we come to this place for any other reason... We're missing the goal. We're missing the priority because it's all about Jesus here. Amen? Give me an amen. Amen. We all believe that. We do these things or in all reality, we don't believe. Think about it. Think about it. As a church, it's not about us. Our message is the priority and the message is all about Jesus Friend, do you remember, do you remember when someone shared the message of Jesus with you? Some of y'all got to think way back, amen? You heard the good news one day, but the reason you heard the good news is because somebody told you. Somebody spoke the good news to you so that you could believe. When we receive the good news, things change. When we truly receive this top priority, this incredible message, things change and we're never the same again. In fact, if it's good news to us, it's going to be good news to other people too. I 
believe that that is really what the Lord's assignment to believers really is. I believe that the Lord's assignment is to share this incredible message with people that don't know Jesus. See, sometimes, sometimes we lose sight of our assignment. Sometimes we lose sight of our assignment to save, to share the good news about Jesus with other people that don't know Him. And we go through our days, day in and day out, having lost sight of what the Lord's assignment to us really is. You see, the measure of success for a church has nothing to do with buildings. The measure of success for a church has zero to do with a budget. The measure of success has nothing to do with a program. The message of success, the measure of success is all about producing and developing committed followers of Jesus Christ. And if we're not doing that, then we're missing the message. Our goal, friend, our goal is to depopulate hell. We don't want no more people going there. Is that your goal? Is that your goal? We want people to have life. We want people to have abundant life. We want people to have eternal life with our amazing Father in heaven. We want people to be filled with purpose We want people to have a relationship with God that is like no other. But how? How do we go about doing that? How do we do it? Well, Jesus is the way. It's all about Jesus. So if you know Him, if you know Him in a truly intimate way, you've got all that it is required to make another committed follower of Jesus. How do we do it? Well, in Matthew chapter 28, beginning in verse 16, we come to the conclusion of this book in Matthew. Jesus has been raised from the dead, and the first people to see him and communicate with him were several women, Mary Magdalene and several others. And Jesus, in his resurrected body, tells these ladies, don't be afraid. But go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will be seeing me. And then in verse 16, we find that the 11 disciples do that. They went away to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But listen to this. Some doubted. Some of the ones that were closest to Jesus while he was on this earth and throughout his ministry, some of them doubted that it was really him. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now the very first essential to making a committed follower of Jesus is this. Listen carefully. We must connect with people outside the church. We must connect with people outside the church. The first thing that Jesus told the boys is to go. He didn't say, snuggle up in your pew. He said, I want you to go. See, making disciples is not a stationary act. It's a matter of going. It's a matter of going outside the building. It should be the very nature of a Christian to go. To go. We don't just sit and stay. We get and go. Amen. I read about a paramedic 
who was once asked this question. He was once asked, what was your most unusual 911 call? And the paramedic said, well, once we got this call from this frantic usher down at First Baptist Church, and he was very concerned about this elderly man who had passed out during the sermon, and it appeared that he was dead. The usher couldn't find a pulse. It didn't appear like he was breathing. And when that paramedic was asked, well, what was so unusual about this particular call? The paramedic said, well, we carried out four guys before we found the one that was dead. (laughs) Now that's funny. I don't care who you are. But as funny as that is, the message ain't funny. Don't be caught dead in your pew. Don't be caught dead sitting in your pew clocking in on a Sunday morning. If our faith means anything, it means that we should be active. And this just goes for everybody, not just teachers and deacons and pastors. It goes for everybody within the body of Christ. We all need to be active in sharing with those who don't know Jesus and who have zero hope. So we must connect with those outside the church. But there's a second essential to making a committed follower of Jesus, and that is this. We must lead people to make a decision. Jesus said, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Through our behavior and, say and, through our behavior and our words. Behavior and our words, hopefully you are leading people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus uses baptism as a picture of that decision. Why baptism? Well, baptism basically is a public proclamation that one has submitted his or her life to the lordship of Jesus. And when somebody is baptized, it's more than just a statement of belief. It's more than that. We're not only called to believe, listen carefully, we're also called to belong. It's not only a statement of belief, we're also called to belong to the body of Christ. We're called to belong to one another. We belong to the church. We belong to the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is alive. The body of Christ is active. The body of Christ is going outside the walls of the church. And the body of Christ depends upon every other part for its very existence. We're a family. We're a family that's learning to live in a way that honors God. We're a family growing in a way that honors God. We're a family reproducing ourselves for the glory of God. We're the body of Christ here. And we're alive and active. Now there's a third essential to making a committed follower of Christ. And that is this. We must demonstrate obedience. Did you hear what Jesus said? He said, teach them to observe. Teach them to observe everything that I've commanded you. We are called to demonstrate obedience. If you are going to make a committed follower of Jesus, you have got to teach obedience to the Word of God. That is the case. In other words, if the Lord said do it, that means we're supposed to be doing it. Amen? We're supposed to be living in obedience. But listen, this kind of obedience doesn't happen just in the classroom. This kind of obedience doesn't just happen by doing homework. This kind of obedience doesn't just happen by uh, by reading the Bible cover to cover. No, this kind of obedience happens on a field trip. Amen? This kind of obedience happens on a field trip, praise God. Do you remember how great it was to go on a field trip when you were in school? Man, that was great. Field trips were the highlight 
of the whole school year. That was an exciting time because it was an opportunity to get out. It was an opportunity to get going. It was an opportunity to to use what we've been learning in the classroom. Friend, I pray that your life is a nonstop field trip using what you've learned in the classroom. In that one passage, Jesus calls believers to go, make, baptize, and teach. Go, make, baptize, and teach. Why does he call us to go, make, baptize, and teach? Well, friend, the best way to teach someone something, the best way to teach someone a biblical life lesson is to live it. You want to teach your kids? Live it. You want to teach somebody else who don't know Jesus what it's like to be a Jesus child? Live it. Demonstrate obedience. The best way to encourage someone to become a follower of Christ is to let them see it. Let them see it in action. Now here's a truth for you. Y'all ready? Say, I'm ready. You can't teach obedience if you ain't doing it. You can't teach obedience to the word if you ain't living it yourself. That's just throwing it out there, amen? And believe me, I had to chew on this all week so don't feel shot at. Connecting with others outside the church. Leading them to make a decision for Christ in baptism. Professing that He is Lord. But also demonstrating obedience. Those are all essential if you're going to make a follower of Jesus. But today, I want to get in to some specifics. I want to share with you what specifically you can do to accomplish the Lord's assignment for you as a believer. Here we go. Number one, feel God's heart for people. Feel God's heart for the world. Listen to how Peter describes God's heart. He says that the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. That means He's not He's not slow concerning His promise, as some count slowness. But God is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any, say any, not willing that any, not even one, He's not willing not even one should perish, but that all, should come to repentance. Here Peter expresses that God is not willing that one person should pass from this life outside of a relationship with God. That's his desire. It is God's desire that not one would perish and be eternally separated from God. God has gone all out. He's gone all out to make sure that those who are lost can be found. Is that me? God has also held nothing back, not even His only begotten Son, but rather desires that He would win them for Himself. That should be our heartbeat too. As God loves people of this world, we should love people of this world. Our hearts should be breaking, y'all. Our hearts should be breaking that there are people dying daily that don't know Jesus. If our hearts are breaking, can you imagine how their creator feels? Why should we feel this way? Why should our hearts be breaking because one is dying without Jesus? Because that means that we blew it. If one dies without a saving knowledge of Christ Jesus, that means that we were unsuccessful in depopulating hell because somebody else went there. And I believe that when we fail, it breaks God's heart. Because we're the chosen mechanism. We're the body of Christ now. 
Jesus is at the, the Father's right hand. And he's left the body of Christ here for us to share this glorious good news. And he doesn't want anybody to perish. But not only should we feel God's heart for people and for the world, we should also express to people what Jesus means to us. Listen to what Peter said in 1 Peter 3.15. He said, always be ready. Always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for the hope that you have. Always be ready to tell somebody why you have hope in Christ. In other words, be a witness, y'all. In other words, be willing to tell your story. In other words, tell people how Jesus has changed your life. Be willing. Just be willing to share your faith and God will take the opportunity to put you and connect you with somebody that needs to hear your story. Be willing to tell them. But a third way to accomplish the Lord's assignment for believers is that we don't separate the good news from good works. Don't separate the good news of Jesus with the good deeds of obedience. Listen to what the Acts, in Acts chapter 10 the Bible says. Peter is sharing with um, a person that doesn't know Jesus. And his name is Cornelius. And he's sharing with Cornelius and his household. And here's what he says. He was telling Cornelius how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Listen to this part. Who went about doing good. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses, Peter says, of all the things that Jesus did. Both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him, Jesus, God raised up on the third day. Showing him openly. Not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God. Even to us who ate and drank with Him after He arose from the dead. And Jesus commanded us to preach to the people. To preach to the people and to testify that it is He who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and of the dead. To Him, to Jesus, the prophets, all the Bible, witness that through His name, Whoever believes in Him will receive forgiveness of sins. Wow. In that description of all that Jesus did, Peter begins by saying that Jesus went about doing good. See, Jesus didn't separate the good news from good deeds. We often think that people just need better information. If they just had more information, maybe they might be saved. But people ain't looking for more information. People are looking for people that are real. People are looking for believers that are genuine. They're looking for followers of Jesus that are legit. They're looking for you. And they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. We cannot separate the good news from good deeds. When people observe us doing good, just like Jesus commanded us to do, then we can make time to show God's love to them, serving them and visiting them and encouraging them and praying for them. And then we might be effective in sharing this great news that Jesus Christ saves So the Lord's assignment includes feeling God's heart for people, expressing what Jesus means to you, but not separating the good news from good deeds. Now there's a fourth way that we can fulfill the Lord's assignment that He's given to us, and that is you can make a difference in your community. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus instructed believers to be salt to be light, and to be yeast. That means that we influence our community. That means that we make an impact in our workplace. 
That means that we cause change in our society. You see, salt gives flavor to food. Light exposes the unseen. And yeast spreads throughout the whole pile of dough and makes it rise higher than it was. That's what you're called to be. As Christians, we are here to transform the environment we live in. We're here to make a difference in our community. So we can't hole up here at the church building. We got to get out. We're never isolated from the culture that we live in. We are here. We exist to influence. But sadly, often, we're the ones that get influenced. Make a difference in your community. I believe that churches ought to be vital to the United States of America. But sadly, churches today seem to be becoming more and more invisible. And that led me to ask, if we disappeared, would anybody notice? If suddenly one day, Bethel Baptist Church was gone, would our community even notice? To reverse this trend in America, we need to take to heart this very last way to fulfill the Lord's assignment. The Lord's assignment to His followers. And that is, we need to serve others with the love of God. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give His life a ransom for many. We're the body of Christ now. And we are called not to be served, but to serve. And give our lives as a ransom for many. As believers, as the body of Christ, you and I are called to bless people. At the end of the day, you ought to be able to make up a list of all the people you blessed that day. At the end of the day, you ought to be able to call, write and make a list of all the people you served that day. Because that's what the body of Christ does. The body of Christ serves. Friends, we can have the eloquence of a statesman. We can have the knowledge of a genius, the faith of a miracle worker. We can have the generosity of a millionaire and the dedication of a martyr. But listen, friend, if we don't engage with people outside the church, if we don't express the love of God to people that don't have a clue, it won't count and it won't matter. So let's feel God's heart for people. Let's be sure to express to them what Jesus means to us. Whatever you do, don't separate the good news from good deeds. Make a difference in your circle of influence. Make a difference. And be sure to serve others with the love of God. Let's be people with purpose. Amen? Let's be Jesus to everybody we encounter. Let them not be able to determine whether it's Bill or Jesus. Amen? Let's be Jesus to a lost and to a dying world. My friends, in a minute, the church is going to leave this building. In a minute, the body of Christ is going to go home for the afternoon. And you need to know that you are them. You are the body of Christ. You are the church. But before that, as we always do, we provide a time of decision where you can respond to the word of God you've heard today. Because God said that His Word never returns void. 
His word never returns empty. So that means that God's word always causes change. And any time we gather together like this and we hear the word taught or preached or whatever, we ought to walk out of here different than we walked in. We ought to walk out changed. But my encouragement to you is, is when, when Jesus returns for you, when Jesus returns for His church, when Jesus returns for the body of Christ, don't be caught on the sidelines. When Jesus returns for His church, don't be caught mistakenly dead in your pew. Let's connect with those outside the building. Once again, in a nutshell, we believe that our Creator God loves His created people so much that He sent His only begotten Son to be an example for us of how to live. And then His Son Jesus suffered and died on a cross paying the price for sin for every man, woman, and child. And then gloriously, he was raised from the grave three days later, proving that God has authority over death, and that by believing, by believing in Jesus, by placing all of our faith, all of our trust, all of our hope in Christ and Christ alone, We can spend eternity in heaven with our Creator God. Now today, He offers all who will believe abundant life here and eternal life in heaven. Is today your day? Is today your day? Is today your day? Believer, I pray that you'll take this message and that you will uh, connect with everyone in your circle of influence and that you will make a difference in their life for the cause of Christ. Let me pray for you.